Hi friends, welcome back to Neonatology Basics, Bedside and Beyond. Over these three days, we will be discussing about the growth charts, growth of the newborn and nutrition. I hope all of you have gone through the video presentation on growth charts and you will be knowing now how to use the growth charts in both term and preterm babies. Today, we will discuss about SGA, that is small for gestational age babies and their catch-up growth. We will be discuss, discussing only the growth of the babies as we will have a separate session on the problems of IUGR, problems of HGA babies later on. So what is the definition of a small for gestational age babies? We know that the definition is not a straightforward one. There are others who describe SGA as growth parameters less than 10th centile or 3rd centile on a standard growth chart. Some defines it as less than 2 standard deviation that is almost approaching 2nd centile on a standard growth chart. But the International SGA Advisory Board Statement and the Consensus Statement of International Society of Pediatric Endocrinology and Growth Hormone Research strongly recommended that SGA should be defined as those neonates whose birth weight or birth crown heel length is at least two standard deviation scores below the mean for the gestational age based on a data which is derived from a reference population. Why this two standard deviation score is selected because it encompasses the majority of patients with disordered fetal growth. Now SGA can be subclassified into SGA for weight, SGA for length and SGA for both weight and length. The definition of SGA does not take into account the background growth modifying factors such as maternal size, size ethnicity or parity. It is just based on the birth parameters that is weight, length and head circumference at birth. So majority of practitioners uses SGA and IUGR or low birth weight interchangeably. They use it as synonymous with each other, but they are not synonymous. SGA means it is the size of the infant at birth. IUGR as the name denotes it is intrauterine growth restriction. It is the diminished growth velocity inside the uterus. It is, should be at least documented by two intrauterine growth assessments. A child who is born SGA need not necessarily be suffered from IUGR and an infant who are born or a period of IUGR are not necessarily SGA. So these two terms are not equal. It's true that some of the SGA babies may be IUGR or the IUGR baby can born as an SGA baby. The IUGR subgroup has an increased perinatal complication. Now coming to the low birth weight, it is mainly used as an epidemiological purpose and any birth weight which is less than 2.5 kg irrespective of the gestational age is taken as low birth weight. The baby can be a term baby, their baby can be a preterm baby. We don't take, take into consideration gestational age. Any birth weight which is less than 2.5 kg is a low birth weight. And we know that is again subclassified into the LBW that is very low birth weight babies whose weight is less than 1.5 kg and ELBWs whose birth weight is less than 1 kg. And almost 70% of the low birth weight babies are born SGA. And SGA itself is a risk factor for growth and development disorders and chronic illnesses in the later life. They are at high risk of attaining an adult height which is less than the target height. Target height. And we know Barker's hypothesis. There is, they have the increased risk of obesity, cardiovascular diseases, insulin resistance and diabetes mellitus in later life. I am not discussing Barker's hypothesis detailed here because it will be discussed in the IUGR session later. These SGA babies are also at high risk of precocious puberty. Now we will come to the causes of small for gestation age birth. 
the causes can be broadly classified into maternal factors, placental factors, and fetal factors. One of the major determinants of maternal factors is the maternal anthropometry, that is, weight and height of the mother. Parity, illnesses like pregnancy induced hypertension or gestational diabetes mellitus, chronic diseases of the mother, infections, malnutrition, substance abuse, and passive smoking is, is also a risk factor for SGA. Placental factors include placenta insufficiency and structural anomalies of the placenta. Fetal factors include chromosomal anomalies, genetic defects, or tin to tin transfusion syndrome. These chromosomally or uh, chromosome normal babies like Down syndrome or Turner syndrome, they will be having hypoplastic IUGR and their growth potential will be less than that of malnourished IUGR. Now we will come to the growth in SGA babies. About 90% of SGA children show some degree of accelerated growth during infancy. The rapid infant growth can be viewed as a compensatory mechanism for prenatal growth deficit, referred to as catch-up growth. Coming to the definition of catch-up growth, it is defined as weight or length gain greater than 0.67 standard deviation score, which represents the width of each percentile band in the standard growth chart indicating clinically significant central crossing. It is a typically an early postnatal process that in most SGA infants it will be completed by the age of two years. 80% of the infants born SGA show catch-up growth during the first six months of life. 90% have catch-up growth by two years of life, two years of age. The standard teaching is that Head circumference will be the first growth parameter to catch up, followed by weight and then length. About 10% of children will not show any catch up growth. Most of these children continue to experience poor growth throughout their childhood and they remain short at the age of 2 years. These individuals constitute a higher proportion of children and adults with short stature. Now we will come to the Indian scenario. The growth trends in Indian children are rather slow. As I already told that majority of the children who are born SGA will show their catch up growth by 2 years. But Indian data shows that even by 4 years one third, only one third of the LBW babies show catch up, up to normal range for weight and only one fourth of the low birth weight babies catch up to normal range of head circumference and height. Other two important points are weight and height at one year are the determinants of catch up at four years. And weight at one year is a reflection of postnatal endowment. From these two points it is clear that the growth in the first year of life is determining the later growth. The adolescent growth of Indian children also lacks an ultimate reduction in height and weight will be there. The poor growth trend of Indian children may be due to pure nutritional and environmental factors. In majority of SGA babies who shows poor catch up we don't know what is the cause. There can be nutritional or environmental factors and endocrine factors. Coming to the nutritional and environmental factors, the nutritional or environmental insult in the perinatal life are irreversible and they will have long time sequelae. Mothers and weight and height, as I already described, is an important factor and poor maternal nutrition is another important factor. Endocrine factors, actually these factors can modify the programmed growth potential of the baby. The insulin-like growth factor 1 and 2 and insulin seem to be the most important endocrine regulators in the early post life. Others like thyroxine, cortisol, leptin and sex steroids are also important. 
எஸ் ஜி ஐ இன்ஃபென்ஸ் மைட் பி அஃபெக்டட் பை தி இன்ட்ராயூட்ரி ரீப்ரோக்ராமிங் ஆஃப் தி ஹைப்போதலாமிக் பிட்டுவிட்ரி அண்ட் ஆன்டினல் ஆக்சிஸ் திஸ் ஸ்லைட் ஷோஸ் தி இஃபெக்ட் ஆஃப் வேரியஸ் ஹார்மோனல் ஃபேக்டர்ஸ் தட்ஸ் லைக் க்ரோத் ஹார்மோன் இன்சுலின் லைக் க்ரோத் ஃபேக்டர் ஒன் சிஸ்டம் இன்சுலின் கோர்டிசோல் தைராக்சின் லெப்டின் அண்ட் செக்ஸ் ஸ்டீராய்ட்ஸ் த ரெகுலேட்ஸ் அ ஜெனட்டிக்லி டிட்டர்மின்ட் pre-programmed growth potential of the growth plate of the baby. Now we come to the follow-up of HGA babies. A high-risk follow-up is needed, of course. Regular monitoring of weight, height, BMI and pubertal assessment at adolescence is needed. Excess weight gain should be monitored. Exclusive breastfeeding helps to prevent the excess weight gain. And there is adequate evidence that breastfeeding till 2 years also protects against long term risk of obesity and intellectual impairment this charts is a recommendation for follow up for sg infants is taken from indian pediatrics in 2015 regular monitoring of weight length in a high risk clinic is needed as i already mentioned if the babies are showing catch up growth they should be followed frequently every 3 monthly and they should be monitored for excess weight gain and if needed further evaluation should be done and the real concern is about the babies who shows a lack of growth growth catch up growth so early surveillance in a growth clinic is needed and by 2 to 3 years of age an endocrinologist should be reviewed and if there is a short stay it should be worked up and these babies should be monitored by annually for weight height and bmi and the annual pubertal assessment should also be done when they reach their pubertal age the nutrition management the supplements all will be discussed in the nutrition section now the next two to three slides i will just mention about the growth hormone therapy of the sga babies the growth hormone therapy is indicated in those sga babies who do not show any catch up even by 4 years with their height which is less than 2.5 standard deviation from the standard deviation score from the median that it almost it will reach up to first centile it will be between first and second centile the aim of growth hormone therapy is to induce catch up to normal height early reduce psychosocial problems and improve social adaptation the dose of growth hormone recommended is 35 to 70 microgram per kg per day growth hormone treatment is recommended till the growth rate falls to less than 2 cm per year and this treatment is not associated with any significant adverse events the average height gain after 3 years of growth hormone treatment ranges from 1.2 to 2 standard deviation scores but important thing is that the growth hormone therapy has no effect on the onset of puberty and its progression it shows improvement in height and also the psychosocial adaptation the effect of growth hormone therapy on the development of adult metabolic syndrome is uncertain we know that growth hormone therapy is a costly treatment and its feasibility in resource limited settings like india is uncertain we have few studies which which, which recommends the growth hormone therapy in indian children also for those babies who fail to catch up their height thank you